my favorite place on earth, traditional markets. And for 24 hours, we are going to eat our way through it, showing you the best Korean street food that you'll ever find. Trust me on this. I do this as my job. I did it again. Who told you that I was finished? Fresh off the plane with a new Manny Petty. My hair stay laid and you know I get paid. $100 bills, I got racks on the way. Give me cash. I'm gonna blow all this. Okay, I'm gonna start with the hot dog. So what I really like about this place is that they use a corn infused dough. So that's why it gets that kind of like yellow sheen. So you can get two flavors. You can get either savory or sweet. And the savory version has chapche, which is the Korean glass noodle filling. And then the other one, the sweet one is um, cinnamon, sugar, and nut mix. And it's so good. Kevin said that it's his favorite dessert like ever. And I think it's one of my favorite desserts ever too. This one's the savory one. This is the chapche hot dog and this is the regular hot dog. Look how beautiful and crispy and yellow and golden it is. It's pretty. This is the dessert that you have to try when you come to Korea. Look at how flaky it is. It's actually like beautifully caramelized. It's like puffy. As soon as it like hits that oil, it kind of like puffs up and then you kind of press it down like your childhood trauma. It's like salty and sweet. It kind of has like almost like a teriyaki flavor. These are glass noodles and they're made with sweet potato starch. And what they're really good at doing is just absorbing juice and it makes the hot dog really moist and flavorful. There's like onions, there's carrots, there's Chinese chives. And look how the dough is just so light and flaky and fluffy. Wow. I'm gonna try the sweet version. Where is it? Are you? also super crispy and you can see kind of like the sesame that's like embedded in the dough. I'm expecting a burst of brown sugar and nuts to explode in my mouth. Mm. Super crispy, a punch of cinnamon, brown sugar, sunflower seeds, black sesame seeds. You know, I'm kind of sad that I'm ungatekeeping this place because this is kind of like my spot. And it's like a perfect donut. Perfect donut. It has the crispiness of a waffle, but the softness of like a pancake or a woman's touch. Now that we had something sweet, I'm in the mood to get something more savory. This is dried squid. This is corn cakes, and then this is like mugwort cake also. Those Tempura looks so good. 안녕하세요. So the thing with like Korean fried food is that we are the nation of double frying. Like anything other than pastries is like always double fried. One, it's like actually time effective. Like you can fry in advance and just like heat it up and it's like crispier and better. So it's like smart and time effective. So I just asked for like $5 worth of fried food and this is how much he gave. You know what makes me happy? When like oil seeps out of paper, this is when my heart starts beating. ASMR time. I don't have the long acrylics to do it though. Wow! It's hard to get the veggie tempura right because you can't have too much dough or else it becomes too doughy and it's not crispy. So there's like onion, there's sweet potato, carrot, and a little bit of perilla as well. Crispy, sweet. Imagine just like stuffing sweet potato fries and onion fries all in one bite. Okay, so this is a squid. Mm. It's not fresh squid. It's actually dried squid that they rehydrated. We love chewy food in Korea, but I prefer like Italian style calamari. Just for this one. Chewy, shrimp, shrimp. No, well, shrimp is good. Shrimp is really good. Very sweet, juicy, and tender. The pepper, this is what I'm talking about. So this is kochutigim. It's a stuffed pepper. So inside is also stuffed with glass noodles. It's good, but I think I would have preferred like a meatier or like a tofu filling for sure. Well, I don't know which one this is. Long and skinny though, so me likey. Mmm, it's surimi, the imitation crab meat. Mmm, actually really good too. Sweet potato, fried sweet potato. What I like about this is that it kind of chokes you. Uh-huh, honey. It's like the same throat feel as 
peanut butter sandwich. It's kind of like, it hurts, but in a good way. So this is kimmari, and we love to dip it into tteokbokki sauce. But look at how beautiful this fry is. Like a good fry looks like it has eczema. Mmm. It's like crunchy, but also spongy inside. Very yummy. My favorite out of all of them, definitely the tempura one. It's really hard to get that crispy texture without it being too dense and like holding together. Like if I lived around in this area, I would buy just like a bunch of tempura, make a little like soy sauce action and just drizzle it over rice. And like that would be a great meal of its own. And this is so cheap. Like all this, like it could feed like three people for $5. It's my clutch. That's a whole baby, and she's doing it without hands too. Oh, it's really cold in my hands and my feet. My flanges are freezing. So let's go eat some. 저희 순대랑 불 닭발이랑 그렇게 주세요. Yeah. This is Korean Facial 101. This is how we retain good skin. It's hot broth. Opens up your pores. Okay. We have jokbal, which is pig trotters. We have takbal, which is boneless chicken feet. And we have sundikguk, which is pork intestine soup. This is the soup. Oh, yeah. 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 You want to adjust the saltiness to your level. I am definitely going to add a little bit of fermented shrimp sauce. So a little bit of kochukaru in as well, Korean red pepper flake. I'm gonna just start with a little bit. We also have to put garlic in. Ah. More garlic. Mm. You want to put the rice in, right? You want to shake it to release it from its cages. Like this. And you can also do something like this. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> so this is called kukpa. Kuk means soup and then pap means rice, right? And the pot that they serve it in is a earthenware stone pot and it's really thick so it retains heat for a very long time so that the soup stays warm. Like this. Ah, want some of this? Dip it in. Tenjang. Oh yeah. And this dish is actually really customizable. So this has um something called a wild perilla powder called tikkekaru. And it adds a bit of kind of like earthy tones to the sundikuk. Like that. Beautiful. And you can see all the perilla seed powder rising to the top. Think of sundikung as kind of like a blank canvas. And you start layering and adding things to what you like. And you can really customize. And this is And that's the same green pepper. Nice. That's just cut up. <laughs> this is ultimate wintertime food. Okay, let's take a bite. Oh, this is a big boy. Wow. <laughs> 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 
빨리 먹어. 신나 오신 맥주인데. 아 먹어. 아 근데 좀 짜고 있어요. 이 집이 전문한 집이요. 말 같아. So this is takbar. It's boneless chicken feet. I much prefer this to bone in because it's just so much easier to eat. Mm. Spicy and it's all in the texture. She grilled it over the charcoal fire but because it kind of makes the skin even more taut and has that like really nice smokiness from the sauce that I want. That's hilarious. Mini jokbai, so it's a smaller pig trotter. I like the smaller ones because smaller means there's more surface area. And the reason why you eat pig trotter is all for that collagen outside. And you need to use your hands for this one. It's chewy and salty and fatty. And the beauty of it is just like maneuvering through the bones, finding just the right amount of meat. <sighs> that broth really warmed me up and now I feel so energized to keep eating more. This is work, okay? This is strictly for work. I don't usually eat this much. <laughs> oh, look at this. So this is like a panchan shop and you can kind of like pick and choose all these like Korean side dishes which is really nice so a lot of people who live alone they would come to these panchan shops and just buy a couple side dishes this for real is how like Koreans meal prep oh and look at how pretty that egg is too they're making freshly pressed sesame oil which is super cool to see it kind of smells like a coffee roastery almost wow <gasps> wow! Ah, this is how it looks like a coffee roast. Do you want to add some salt to it? Yes, thank you. Oh, they are using the old um, calendar to wrap it. <laughs> oh, so it's not a long time ago? No, it's still here. Ah. Look, look at the people, just look at them. You meet your friends, you hang out, and strolling around, what's gonna be good for dinner tonight? And it's just fun, like, you just don't see this much in big cities anymore. If you watch my shorts, you've probably seen this, because we're at the infamous Harmony Kirikori Toast. Kirikori literally just translates to the street. So it means like street style toast. If your partner is being a hoe, male or female, to the Kirikori you go is how you say it. Mm. The layers on this is crazy. You get like the cheesy top, the ham that's like slightly roasted and the margarine, the omelet with the juicy cabbage that's sweet and caramelized and that kind of adds us like a moisture bomb which is what I love, love, love about this place. They understand that a sandwich needs moisture. If you don't like the word moist, fight me because you need to grow up. I've said this before, but I would consider this a diet food because it's basically a warm salad with egg, which is good for protein, so. This place definitely is really special though because it's um, two generations. They started off with like a really like small cart. <laughs> so many dogs. You can really feel that like Korea is not having children because it's just dogs everywhere. You don't really see like human babies anywhere. Yeah, but this place is really special because it's like 
two generations. It started off as a little like side alley cart、um, with this like harmony, which translates to grandmother. So it means like grandmother toast. And、uh, she passed away, so she gave the recipe to her daughter-in-law, who's、uh, making it right now, and she's from Vietnam. Hmm. So inside there's ketchup, mustard, and sugar. I know that the sugar part is kind of weird for some people, but it kind of tastes like sweet egg omelet, like almost like custardy feeling to it. And the cabbages add a really nice bite and like texture to the omelet, making it thick. You know, you don't want an egg sandwich that's like thin and just like scabby looking. This is. Thick and moist and juicy and big, which makes it so like appetizing. Also, definitely a messy food though. Do you see why I love this market so much? It's filled with unique eats and kind people. You can see also here that this is a beloved local joint. Like the patrons have been coming here for 10, 20 years, and it's nice to see a local eatery just filled with so much love. We've only explored half of the market, so we're gonna cross the street and see what's up on the other side. I feel like when you visit Korea, you have to visit one of these markets. Like the cafes are cute, but this is where the locals go to. So much food, huh? Ah, now that I had some egg toast, I want to get something spicy again. So I'm gonna get some tteokbokki. And the tteokbokki place here is actually really good. It's quite famous, also. They've been open for like 20 years. It must be the cold weather, but I can eat and eat and eat. Do this to make sure. There's no splinters. Tteokbokki, three thousand won, which is like two dollars nineteen. So the tteokbokki here, these big juicy white rice cakes. They're so good. It's like not too spicy either. I don't know why us Asians like chewy and sticky texture, but there's really just nothing like it. Like everything is made fresh. Like you have so much. Local produce that you can just step outside your door and can cook with. Like guaranteed, almost everything in this market is just so good. Like I haven't had an unsuccessful meal in this market, and I can also get kind of picky sometimes. So I got a pungo pa, and pungo translates to koi fish, and so this is our koi fish bread, and you can get it in two flavors: shoe cream or red bean filling. Blech. I like to eat like tail first because it's crispier on the bottom. Mmm, so warm and custardy. If you want to catch a Korean oppa, you can just start making these. You'll be able to catch them like fish. It's like. Koi fish if it got gutted. Really good though. I think our egg bread is ready right now. I told him that I was gonna buy all the egg bread here, and he was like, "Today's yield is this." <laughs> I never knew how they made these before. Like, I didn't know when you crack the egg, you mix it, and it kind of creates this like sheen on top because like some of the custard and the sugar rises and it caramelizes and brulees. Oh, fancy word, brulee. So the bottom layer is sponge cake. And then the top is egg. It almost smells like、uh, pastel de nata, like one of those like Portuguese egg tarts, mixed with like the sweet custard bread on the bottom and the salty egg. It has that like weird in between of sweet and savory, but it works and has this like roasted、mm. flavor. This is delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I 
<laughs> What's different about Korean corn versus like American corn is that these corn, it's not like sweet corn where it's sweet, it's more starchy and gluttonous and it also has a chewy texture. Chewy and sticky almost. It almost tastes like creamed corn texture. Mm. It's good. Mm. I actually love Korean corn. <laughs> yeah, he's asking me. <laughs> This is what Asian love looks like. Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> ah, they, super fluffy. And you get this by like slow roasting it on like hot coals or stones. Like the low roasting process really maximizes and brings out all the sugar and caramelizes the outside. It's just like candy. You can also see the, some of the sugar that's like crystallized here. That's what's burning my hands right now. Wow, it's so gorgeous. It's like me, yellow and golden and steaming. I am stuffed to the brim. And now that we got all these nice goodies from him, I'm gonna eat the rest at home in a warm blanket before we head out for some more. This is a market that's like 10-15 minutes walk from Gwangjang Market and it's called Shinjin Market and this market focuses on one thing and one thing only and that is intestines. All the street has cow intestine, pig intestine and we love to stir fry it in some gochujang and gochugaru and some garlic because why? We're Korean babe. Catch up. Oh. Messing with my audio here, huh? Look at the vibe around this place. Like everyone's eating outside, just slurping away some intestines. It's fun. So oh, this is the place to come if you're drunk and you want something fatty and chewy and spicy. It's right here. This is pig intestines, and she is just kind of like stir frying it. It's been parboiled so that some of that scum and the extra oiliness is out. And I ordered the yachi gopchang, which translates to vegetable intestine stir fry. And it has leeks, onions, cabbage. She just asked if I eat spicy. And that's MSG, some kuchikaru, which is Korean chili flakes, and the spicy sauce. This is gonna be the secret sauce for her stir fry recipe. And every restaurant is going to have their own take on their sauce. And this is perilla leaves. You can think of this kind of as like our cilantro. This has like this like herbaceousness, very similar looking to Japanese shiso, but it's more earthy and it comes from perilla seed powder. Glass noodles, and they're gonna add some more volume and help absorb the sauce even better and the oil too. But already the smell of the perilla is really really nice. It's like earthy. There's like something about eating outside during the winter that makes food taste even more delicious. I don't know if it's the steam, I don't know if it's the cold that you're like burning the calories that makes you hungry for like greasy food, but this I'm like way too excited about. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm just gonna have one on its own. Salty, sweet, spicy, with a little mm. bit of MSG to really get the umami going. This is oh. what Korean street food is all about. Wow. So delicious. And if this wasn't enough sauce, she gives a little extra on the side too. We have a very big culture of eating outside, sitting around this like round aluminum table. We just eat and eat and eat and drink until the night ends. So sam is just whatever parcel of veggies to deliver food into your mouth. All the ladies are just like catcalling the guests. Hey lady, hey pretty lady, come here. I can make you some good food. 
She's good this one. That's how she got us too. <laughs> like we didn't, we weren't looking for a particular place. Her prerogative now is to get us out as fast as possible for the next guest. This is Korean math, not girl math, Korean math. Now you can see all the oil oozing out from the intestine. And that kind of gives it that like really like creamy texture and like mouth feel. If you're scared of trying something like intestines, think of it as like chicken skin. It's nothing weird. Like you eat all the different parts of the pork. Why not eat the intestine? It comes from the same animal. If you really say that you love food, it's something that you should try at least once. If you don't like it, well, don't yuck my yum. Time for some soju. My lens, my precious lens. Sorry, doobies. That was bitter. This got me in the mood to eat more and mm. drink more. This is like appetizer. You wanna go drinking and eating with the Korean? You don't just like go to one restaurant and order appetizers, mains, and desserts. We go to like three, four, five different places and end up in a karaoke in the middle of nowhere. Let's go. <laughs> 45 years she's been open. She's seen some shit. Like there's there's one intestine place that does well. The whole street ends up becoming an intestine street. <laughs> On to our next spot. One of the beauties of going to these like old traditional markets is just like people watching, you're gonna see so many like interesting characters that you wouldn't really see. These types of places are my favorite. Like the places where it's a supermarket, but then they also allow you to just like sit down and like eat whatever you pick off from the counter. You can get like fried spam and like instant ramen and like chips with some beer on the side. And it's like super cheap, but also just like super fun. This is Kevin's long johns. He was like, I have a very extra long underwear you should wear. <laughs> shit. Shit, 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 shit. Open the door, open the door for him. Come on. Come on. Faith in humanity restored. We're here in front of Korea's most underrated market. I'm just kidding, it's touristed as fuck. But if you come around like 7.40, like a little before eight, it's not as packed. These days, like Gwangjang Market, it's impossible to get in without being squished like a little bean sprout. But there's a reason why it's so famous. Let's go! You got an attitude, but that's your style. Maybe if I could get up in your latitude somehow, then we could put the past back where it belongs for now. Trying to find the beef tartare street. Well, it's been a hot minute since I've been here. This is a place we need to go to. See, not a long line. During weekends, you have to wait like two hours. This is Korean beef tartare. It was on the Michelin Bib Gourmand and it's dressed in sesame oil, sugar, and a little bit of soy sauce and Korean pear and crowned with an egg yolk. And it is one of my favorite bites to get here in Gwangjang Market. <laughs> So the thing that you need to try here is definitely the beef tartare and they have an option of adding like live octopus that's still squirming that like a lot of people would get freaked out by. Are you ready for this? I don't know if you've been able to catch on to a common theme throughout Korean food is that we like things chewy. Texture is a very, very big part of Korean food and the reason why we have live octopus like this is because we like the sensation as well as it's a little sweet and the bite to it is really really nice. There's like eight people each year that die from 
asphyxiation from uh, live octopus in Korea. Delicious. I mean, the most important factor with beef tartare is using good quality sesame oil. Raw on raw on raw is how I like it on my plate and in bed. <laughs> That's actually really good. It's like fresh, grossed sesame oil is coming through, a little bit of brown sugar. I didn't really like beef tartare when I was younger, mm. but now I do. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the fact that it didn't taste like anything, but that's like what I keep craving when I get older. Wow, I sound really old now. Like I crave like taste of the ingredient, easier on the gut. IBS Unite. Like the radish soup here is also so bomb because it's like all the leftover beef and then you make soup with it. And radish during the winter is always the best and sweet. Mm. It's like pho, according to AJ. And I stole all your lines. Bowl club. Oh. Fuck. You know when I'm the happiest? When I'm done eating and there's a line. <laughs> now that we got something raw, we need to coat our stomach with more fats. That's how things work around here. These are all heated. It's like they have like electric padding underneath, see? Ah, She's making a little bowl for the ramen and she's gonna just cook it in the tin foil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're like regulars to her place for 15 years. Yeah. And uh, the table next to them just turned 20. Pretty amazing. This is Eastgate B42. The ramen here is what caught my eye. I have never seen this technique. If the French has un papillot, which means to cook in wax paper, you know, like fish, we have un aluminum foil and we cook ramen. You gotta put it into the paper cup first and then you get the broth and then spoon the broth on top so that you can sip on it. And I'm gonna try and find a little cooked oyster in there too as our little garnish. The oysters just add another dimension to the ramen. It has a tiny bit of the brininess from the sea. Makes it so, so good. And the ramen isn't even on the menu. This is only for the VIPs. And I'm not a VIP, I just I just found out because those guys over there were having it and I was like, oh, I want that, please. A smart fat ass is always alert of its surroundings. The chive pancake, very green, kind of looks like grass cuttings made into a pancake, has like that herbaceousness. Mmm, soy pickled onions, they're sweet, they're a little sour, they're, they're salty. What kind of cuts away some of the oiliness from the fritters. Adds a nice, really crunchy texture too. And I ordered the assortment and she just like used her scissors to cut up everything. Korean people, we love scissors. That's like the one utensil that we will use in the kitchen that's so underrated in the rest of the world. Like I don't know why people find it so weird to use scissors when cutting meat or Cutting anything, it's precise, it's easy, and this is the mung bean pancake. It's ground up mung beans with a bit of bean sprout and bound with egg and flour. So the star of the show is definitely the ramen. Yeah. <laughs> 
She's saying that her closing hours are 1 a.m., but her regulars are saying it's 4 a.m., so test your luck. <laughs> and with chan, you need to have makoli. Makoli is the drink to drink when you're in Korea. I feel like when most people think about Korean alcohol, it's always soju. But no, this is the drink of Koreans. You can kind of think of it as almost like unfiltered sake. It comes from rice and it's fermented. I like to drink the first sip unshaken and it's clear like this so that you can kind of taste like the essence of it. <laughs> Now, after you taste that fresh creme de la creme makoli, you want it creamy and you want to mix it up really well. And it's going to get this like almost cream soda consistency. Look, now it's going to be opaque. And that's because the starch from the rice gets mixed evenly and it gets that milky white. A little bit of carbonation on the tongue, a little sweet not super alcoholic, just the right amount of bitterness that keeps making you want to drink more and more and more. And it's perfect to have with some fatty, fatty food. Man, I love street food. And there's so much of it too. It's not just one thing. You can get anything on the streets. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 905, still very much alive. All of these stalls are open until like 1 a.m. A lot of people think that Gwangjang Market, they think of it as almost like a farmer's market. So they come during the day and they think that it's like only a daytime thing. But actually the real time to come is at night because there's nobody, not many tourists, and it's just old drunk dudes having a blast. They're still selling twisted donuts on that way. Let's go. The line usually goes all the way over there, like all the way to the end over there. So this is nothing. All for me. <laughs> so this is guabegi, which means to be twisted. It's a twisted Korean donut. Origins are from China, actually. It's like our rendition of the Chinese guo tiao that became this. Almost like a fried brioche donut. It's a fluffy yeasted dough. And what they do really well at this place is the amount of cinnamon. They put a lot of cinnamon so it's really aromatic and their dough is incredibly fluffy. I know this because I've eaten at this place many a times. Mmm. Lots of air incorporated into the dough, which makes it incredibly fluffy and not dense. Just the right amount of gluten formation, but it's really, really just like biting into a pillow almost that's coated in cinnamon sugar. Let's put a smile on that face. So this is shike. It's a fermented rice drink that's sweetened with rice bran. And that kind of makes it very, very like nutty sweetness. It's called yatgirim. And you want to have it when it's like kind of icy. You don't add the ice, you just freeze it. So it has kind of like a slushy like consistency. Think of it as like Korea's boba. Instead of tapioca pearls, it's rice, fermented rice. Refreshing, sweet, nutty, not overly sweet. It's really nice. The most similar comparison that I can make 
is sugar cane juice. It kind of has that like dark sugar notes as well. You know, when you come to Gwangjang Market, it's not just like the food stalls. There's also stalls that sell like traditional candy. You can also get like medicine. They sell Viagra here, coffee. They sell cockroach repellents. Like you can find everything. This wasn't like a market that was built for tourists. It was one of the most important markets in central Seoul. Kind of essentially like a shopping center. So yeah, that was a whole full day of eating Korean street food only at the traditional markets and I hope you enjoyed it. The beauty of the traditional markets is not only the food but you also eat with your eyes. There's so much to see, smell, hear and the people that are in the markets are really what makes it special and this is where all the locals come to eat real Korean street food. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm so full and I'm gonna pass out and get a food coma. Good night. Bye, love you, doobies.